to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. As he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 15. We welcome you today to our study of the books of 1 and 2 Peter. 1 and 2 Peter is all about Peter's final reminders to Christians to remain faithful and keep pressing toward the prize. And so we encourage you today, if you don't have your Bible handy, to locate it and have it so we can look together in the Word of God, for we're going to use the Bible as our only guide in everything we say and do. As always, we're so glad that you joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lesson and all of our lessons are being brought to you by members and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether it be on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night, you'd be an honored guest at any of their services. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to know more about the church or the plan of salvation or worship, you'll find people at the Lord's Church who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you and help you in any way spiritually. Friend, we'd also like to help you in your study of God's Word and your spiritual journey here at the Gospel of Christ. Uh, you can check us out on our website, thegospelofchrist.com. We have a wide variety of good Bible study material, and it's all free of charge. Just go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and you can find all our information from there. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our previous lessons on a host of subjects, just visit our website again or contact us at the information given, and we make that available to you free of charge. And friend, our main concern today is that we want to help men and women to know God, to get to heaven, and to live with Him for all eternity. As we study today, 1st and 2nd Peter, Peter is going to give Christians some final motivation, final reminders, uh, encouragements along the way to help them make sure that they make it to heaven and don't miss the prize. And so today we're going to be thinking about practical lessons from the books of 1st and 2nd Peter. I want you to notice our first lesson. It's such an encouraging one. And especially in the times that we live in, we all need to hear that Christians have a living hope. Look in your Bible in 1 Peter chapter 1, and I want you to notice what is said in verse number 3. Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, from the dead, and you're going to say, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, which does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Listen to those powerful, what makes Christianity great? What does Peter want to remind them of so they don't give up along the way? Christians have a living hope. That hope that we have is not something that's dead and dusty and 2,000 years old and doesn't apply to the Christian life today. No. Our hope is alive and well because our Lord is alive and well. In fact, the Hebrew writer will say of this hope in Hebrews 6 verse 19, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and it enters in the presence of God in essence through the veil. The hope we have is what anchors us in the, in the tumultuous waters of life. When there's so much chaos, when there's so many problems, what is it that anchors us down? This hope, the Christian hope, we have as an anchor of this whole soul. Colossians 1.27, it is, a, 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 again, a living, a new hope. It's the hope of eternal life. Titus 1 verse 2, Paul said to the young evangelist Titus, we're living in hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie, Promise before time began. Isn't it wonderful to know today 
that our life is not about, our problems in our life is not about the here and now that we have the hope and the joy of Christianity and that everything we do is focused on eternity in each and every way. And so this living hope, how wonderful that is. Now, what is the, when we think about this hope, what gives us some of that great hope? Well, Peter tells us in chapter 1, verse 3, that our hope is through the resurrection. You see, my hope is not tied into this life in the here and now. We have it through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That the hope that one day we're all going to leave this life, okay? Like it or not, or ready for it not, one day we're all going to leave this life. It is appointed a man once to die and then the judgment. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, But the good news is that we can live again after this life is over. John 5, 28 and 29, Jesus said, All who are in the grave will one day come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Because Jesus said, and he is, I am the resurrection and the life. Christians have that hope that no matter what happens, no matter even if I leave this life, I have hope. I have assured anticipation that one day I can live with God for all eternity. Now, I want you to notice another final reminder that Peter gives Christians. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, he tells them not only is our hope in the resurrection and that it's a, a living hope, but we also have a heavenly inheritance. Notice 1 Peter 1, verse number 4. Peter says that we have this resurrection to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Friend, what makes Christianity so great is we are not putting all our, we're not putting all our effort. We're not putting all our interest. We're not putting all our hope in this world, right here and right now, we have a heavenly inheritance. That is, we're looking forward to something better, something greater. Uh, this is not all there is. There's something awaiting the child of God. Philippians 3, verse 20 and 21 says this, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we eagerly wait for the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, into His glorious body. Friend, doesn't it thrill your soul to think about heaven? One day, our true inheritance, our true citizenship is going to be in heaven. Colossians 1 verse 5, we look forward to that heavenly home. Matthew 25 verse 46, Jesus said, the righteous will go away into eternal life. And as Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1 and 2, in this we eagerly groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from above. And friend, what a beautiful picture we have of heaven in Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 and 4. When you, when you think about that, that heavenly inheritance, I want you to think about this beautiful image. The writer says, God will wipe away every tear from their eye. No more sorrow, death, pain, crying. All the former things will have passed away. That, 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 that heavenly inheritance is we get to live with God in a place of peace and happiness and the absence of all discomfort. Don't you want to live with God in heaven? Then Peter says, be reminded of that each and every day to keep walking in the light and keep doing as God would have us to do. Now, all of this is possible. My living hope, that heavenly inheritance, Peter is going to tell me and he's going to remind us that all of this is possible because of the salvation we have in Jesus Christ. I want you to notice 1 Peter 1, verses 9 and 10. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. Friend, when we think about our living hope, and when we think about how good it is to be a Christian, what motivates me to want to live for God every day, Peter says, you need to think about your salvation, receiving the end of your faith, the, the end being the, the, the reward, the goal of your faith the salvation of your souls. 
Friend, what is it that motivates me to never, ever give up if I remain faithful? The Bible clearly teaches because of the grace and the mercy and the love of God, one day my soul can be saved. And how wonderful that is. 1 John 2 verse 25, John clearly taught us this is the promise he's promised us eternal life. One day I can live with God forever in that beautiful place called heaven. And friend, every person needs that, needs salvation because of sin. Do you remember the words of Romans 3 verse 23? The wages of sin is death. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Romans 6 23 says the wages of that sin is death. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2, Isaiah said, The soul who sins shall surely die, and God, his arm's not, his, his arm's not short that he cannot save. His ears not heavy that he cannot hear. But our sins and our iniquities have separated us from our God. And so the problem with sin is all of us have sinned, and that separates us from God. But well, friend, here's the good news. Jesus Christ died so that I don't have to incur the penalty of sin. He bore my sin and yours in His own body upon the cross. 1 Peter 2.24, He Himself bore our sins in His own body upon the tree that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes we are healed. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf that we might be the righteousness of God in Him. How good it is to know that after this life, all is going to be well. I can be saved and live with God for eternity. And I need to be reminded of that great truth. Here's another very powerful truth that every Christian needs to be reminded of. And Peter really emphasizes this throughout the book. Christians every day, need to live lives of holiness to try to be like God. Look at probably one of the thematic statements in the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, and I want you to notice in your Bible in verses 15 and 16. The scripture says, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. And here's the reason why. Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. The Holy Spirit reminds us of a beautiful passage in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 44 in a book where God's people have all these sacrifices, all the offerings trying to attain to the holiness of God. And Peter says, you also, you live good holy lives because God said, be holy for he is holy. Friend, I want to be like God as much as I can each and every day. I want my character I want my mind to have the mind of Christ, Philippians 2 verse 5. I want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus Christ each and every day. 1 Peter 1, uh, 1 Peter 1 verse 22, uh, 1 Peter 2 verses 22 and 21. I want to, want to have the mind of Christ. I want to love what Christ loved. I want to hate what Christ hated. And I want to be holy like God wants me to be holy. And friend, that's not just a good suggestion. That's essential. Hebrews 12 verse 14 says this. Without holiness, no one shall see God. I want my life every day to be, I want to be free from sin. I want to talk the way God wants me to talk. I want to act the way God wants me to act. I want to live my life and treat other people the way God wants me to treat them so that I can attain to the holiness of God. And friend, this is something that Paul begged Christians to do as well. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul said, I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Listen to this now. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Friend, what we ought to do in view of everything God has done for us is to live a pure and holy life. And friend, we want to do that because of God's eternal plan for each one of us. 
Would you look in your Bible at that plan in 1 Peter chapter 1? Look in verses 18 through 20. Peter says, Knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without spot and blemish, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Friend, it's God's eternal plan that makes it possible for us to be holy. God had a plan to save us before time began. 2 Timothy 1, verses 9 and 10 says, Titus 1, 2, we're living in hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie promise before time began. It's hard for the human mind to understand this. But before the first second on the clock of time ticked, Way, way back, God had a plan to save me and to save you. And friend, that plan is based on the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen to these words again. Knowing, Peter says, you need to know, you need to be reminded that you are not redeemed from your aimless conduct handed down by your fathers by silver or gold or things like that. Worldly possessions, worldly treasures couldn't do it. Well, what did it? What redeemed us? He, that precious Lamb of God, without spot or blemish, He was foreordained before the foundations of the world, but was made known in these last times for you. You see, the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. And yet, at the instituting of the Lord's Supper, In Matthew 26, verse 28, Jesus took that fruit of the vine and He said, This is My blood of the new covenant shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Acts 20, verse 28, He purchased the church with His own blood. Colossians 1, verse 14, We're redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that beautiful image in Revelation 1, verses 4 and 5, We are washed and made pure in the blood of the Lamb. I need to be reminded every day of God's eternal plan to save me through the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And friend, that reminder of what Jesus did motivates me so much to want to live for Him. And friend, it ought to motivate us because now, if you're a Christian and you realize God's eternal plan, now you're a new creature in Jesus Christ. The old you has died. You've got a new start. And how wonderful that is. In fact, that's what Peter says next. Look in 1 Peter 1, verses 23 through 25. Peter says, Of these people who have obeyed God's plan, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, its flower falls away, but the Word of the Lord endures forever. Peter says, now this is the Word which by the Gospel was preached to you. Friend, when I think about this plan, and the motivation and the reminder to never ever give up. Let's each be reminded how good it is to get a second start. Romans 6 verses 1 through 4 teaches us that if we've been buried with Christ in baptism, we can rise out of that. Listen to these words, to walk in newness of life. Peter says just what Jesus said in John 3 verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man is born again. And Peter says, you're born again by the Word of God, by obedience to God's will. And friend, here's the beautiful picture of that. I love 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Listen to these words. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. Have you ever thought to yourself, boy, I'd like a do-over. I wish I could take that back. I wish I hadn't said that. I'd like to take the, uh, the eraser and wipe all those marks. As a Christian, that's exactly what we get. A final reminder in chapter 1 that Peter gives us is, if you're a Christian, you get a fresh start. You do get a do-over. You get to hit the reset button and you can start new and walk in newness of life for God and Jesus Christ every day. Now, what does it mean, though, to walk in newness of life? 
That's what Peter is going to detail next in 1 Peter chapter 2. He's going to tell us being a faithful Christian and being a part of God's family means I've got to lay aside some wrong attitudes and actions. Look in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 1. In view of this new life, Peter says, Therefore, lay aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, all evil speaking. And then, of course, he'll say, you've got to go on to grow as a newborn babe. Friend, if I'm going to be what God wants me to be, I've got to, as the writer will say in other places, put to death the old life and take up the new man. The old man can't come back. Malice, anger, wrath, hatred, deceit, jealousy, all that which is of the devil. Getting, not getting a hold of my anger, hatred, being jealous, trying to trick people, all the things that an ungodly, immoral person would do. Christian can't live like that anymore. I need to be reminded, I'm a new man. I've got a second chance. I can't keep living in sin the way I once used to live. And then he tells us how to make sure we don't do that. If I'm going to put to death the old man, put that old life away, like a newborn babe, I've got to grow to do that. Listen to 1 Peter 2 verse 2. As newborn babes, Peter will say, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. A baby has to have milk, has to have nutrition, has to have a proper diet to grow and develop as a Christian, as a person, right? Well, the Christian is no different. Peter says, you're a babe in Christ. As a newborn babe, you need the pure milk of what? The Word that you may grow thereby. Friend, if we're going to be what God wants us to be, we've got to have an insatiable desire for the Word of God, and to grow as a Christian. Matthew 5, verse number 6, Jesus will tell us, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. 2 Peter 3, verse 18, Peter will later say, But grow, and that's a continual word, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want to Search the Scriptures daily. Acts 17, verse 11. We want to study to show ourselves approved unto God, and we want to drink deeply of the Word of God, which will truly satisfy our spiritual appetite. And friend, if I'm doing all that, listen carefully. Here's how this all works together. If I'm growing, if I'm studying the Word of God, if I'm working as a Christian, the old man don't have as much opportunity to raise his ugly head as he might like to. And so we've got to stay focused to do what God wants us to do. And friend, as I think about how good it is to be a Christian, I'm reminded of God's grace and God's love for me. I want you to look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 3 with me. Peter says, after thinking about the Word of God and drinking it in deeply, Peter says, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Friend, do you realize how good God has been to me and you? Do you realize how much the grace of God means to us? By grace are you saved? Ephesians 2 verse 8. God's grace is His long-suffering and His mercy and, and His willingness to save us even when we didn't deserve that. And He says, if you've tasted that the Lord is good, you need to drink deeply of that and live faithful to God each and every day of your life. Now, in 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter kind of gives us an image of what the new Christian and the new person is going to be like in Jesus Christ. There are four different types of stones that Peter uses to, to show the life and the building of the Christian life. Look in 1 Peter chapter 2, and I want you to notice verses 4 through 8 with me. Peter says, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also as living stones are being built up to a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. We are that living stone 
built upon the chief cornerstone. To some, it may be a rock of offense or a stone of stumbling, but for the Christian, we're putting brick on top of brick. The chief cornerstone is the main foundation, and we are building up that spiritual superstructure to bring honor and glory to God every day of our life. And in everything that we would do, we want God to have the glory. Now, there are a couple of other principles as we wind up chapters 1 and 2 that we really want to drive home about the Christian life and how to live in such a way that we bring honor to God. What's it mean to live a new Christian life? Friend, it clearly means, and as it relates to the lust of the flesh, abstinence from things that are immoral and ungodly is the only biblical approach. I want you to watch God's Word here. You know, man's Word is safety. Man's Word is moderation. That's not God's Word. Look in 1 Peter 2 verse 11. Peter says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. As a child of God, you know, sometimes the world wants to promote, Planned Parenthood wants to promote safety. You can do these things in moderation. It's okay. Wait a minute now. As it relates to the lust, lust of the flesh, God says this, I beg you, as sojourners of people, as people who are only going to be here a little while and whose inheritance is in heaven, abstain. Listen to that word. Abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. Well, friend, why is it that we want to abstain? Peter tells us in 1 Peter 2, verses 21 and 22, For the this were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow His steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in His mouth. Friend, I want to walk right, live right, do right, put away the lust of the flesh, bury the old man, because I'm now walking in the footsteps of Jesus. And so we hope today, through Peter's message that every Christian has been reminded how good it is to be a child of God that we're looking for something so much better. And friend, if you're not a Christian, we hope today you'll be encouraged to come, become one. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? John chapter 8, verse 24. Would you be willing to repent of sin and turn to God? Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Would you confess the name of Jesus before men? Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. And to have every sin washed away and to be saved. Would you do what Jesus said? Jesus said this. He that believes and is baptized, will be saved. Mark 16, verse 16. We hope and we encourage you today to join us next time as we'll study more, encouraging us to be faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the gospel of Christ? The gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the